found out why the El Camino wasn't running. Remember how I went ahead and tried to siphon gas out and nothing came out and so I just dumped like four gallons in and then I tried to start it and could get it running but it wouldn't run well. It was running very poorly actually, especially I mean, it ran good on starting fluid but as far as like running off the gasoline, it's not running great. Couldn't figure out why. Decided to go ahead and drop the tank, see what we were dealing with and I found out what we were dealing with. Here's the tank. When we dropped it, we realized it was completely full, which is interesting because I'd only put four gallons of gas in it. But the way this tube, this filler tube comes in here, it stops right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's right there. It stops and for some reason, even though I shoved tons of tube in there, it wouldn't go down. There's something that it would catch on and so I could only siphon off like the top. And so I couldn't get anything. Thought it was empty. It was totally full. Completely full, which is why when I jacked it up and some gas poured out of there, that, that's why. Because it was full. Uh, let me show you what it was full of. It's pretty awesome. Hold up. One of my chickens looks really weird. Chicken? What, what happened to you? One of my chickens is super skinny. Like really, really skinny. Look at that skinny chicken. That's a lot of chickens. Look at all those chickens. Look at that skinny, fast little chicken. Almost fast enough that you would say it's running. And it looks like it would like to run on roads. Like you might even call it a road runner. That's crazy. It's stuck in the chicken coop. Those are chickens. That's a road runner. Oh, it's trying to go through the fence. Oh no, it just got stuck. Hmm. I don't really know how I can help. Uh, you just need to fly out like you flew in. I don't know if they really fly very well though. I think they fly about as good as chickens fly. And those chickens are super confused right now. Oh, there it goes. Oh, and we're out. Problem solved. That was a road runner. They are actually the state bird of Texas and we see them quite often and it's good luck when one runs in front of you. So, congratulations guys, you and me. We're gonna have some good luck today. This is what was in the El Camino. Wine. <laughs> oh, it's so gross and red. Oh, splashing too. Ugh, so gross. It's totally eating the uh, sealer on this thing too. I dumped it in this bucket because I was like, I don't know what else to do with this old gasoline. But that's why it wasn't running. It had a, I didn't know this, I thought it had an empty tank and I put four gallons of new gas in. It had a fairly full tank of super 10 year old gasoline and then I dumped four new gallons of fresh gas in it. So that's why it was sort of running. Cause it will not run off of this blood red gasoline. But it will run off new gasoline. So it had a little bit of new gasoline, enough to get it to kind of put around, but not enough to make it actually run well. I don't really know what to do with that. So far just leaving it right there. Other problem I have is this thing was very dirty inside. Like chunks of stuff. I mean it had gasoline sitting in it forever. So we tried to power wash it, flushed it a ton of times, but listen, I'm gonna set you guys right here. Listen all the junk. It's got a bunch of crud floating around in there that I just can't get out. It has this hole and that hole. Neither are good for getting out solid stuff. So like if I cared about this car that I'm restoring, I would get a whole new gas tank. But lucky for me, I do not care about this car. This was the fuel picker upper. It's pretty nasty. Um, I did decide to go ahead and get a new one of these. And as you'll see, this has a little filter. So it's like a pre-filter. It's, it's a coarse filter. It'll keep that junk from going up into my fuel system. And then we have a fine filter down the line to catch all the little things. So I'm just gonna get a new cinder here and then I think we'll be good and it'll just leave all that junk sitting in the bottom of the tank. I know it's not ideal, but I just don't want to pay for a whole new tank for this beater El Camino that I'm going to be fixing up. So I ordered a new cinder and I ordered a new carb. Whole new carburetor because I just decided I think that will actually help the car run really good if we have a brand new fresh carburetor. My plan though is to get the new cinder, get it on the tank, install the tank, and then go ahead and run it with fresh gas on the old carburetor. So if there is any extra junk in there, it'll flow through our old carburetor and not our brand new one. That's my plan to start off anyway. But now I actually wanna clean out the lines that go from the tank to this carburetor. So here's our main fuel line here. I'm gonna unplug it and then flush air through it and just see what comes out of the other end that's open down there. Okay. Not sure if it's gonna start flowing there, if I'm gonna have to add some pressure to it. Oh, there it goes. 
It's dropping right on top of my differential. Perfect. Oh, I'm getting gross gas all over me. Yep, that's just hitting the differential and then splattering everywhere. Like one quarter of it's gonna go in that bucket. Perfect. Well, we gotta empty that line eventually, so might as well just dump it everywhere. Such a bad idea. It's gonna go everywhere. Just tighten it down on this thing. Yeah, force the pressure in there. Perfect plan, right? What a great idea. I'll put you guys at the other end so you can watch it happen. I'm a mechanic, easy as that. The sender as well as the carburetor should be here tomorrow, I think. Um, so we will continue this then. I'm just gonna do a couple little boring things, but I will see you guys back here tomorrow where ideally we get this thing to run okay. No, I was gonna say well, but I would settle for okay. It's later in the day and it all came. Also, kitty. <laughs> we actually found a home for this little kitty, someone we know is going to take her. So she is leaving tonight. You like the El Camino? She's leaving tonight to go to her new home. And then tomorrow we'll get back to this and this and get that started. See you then. Hey, day two, but you can tell we're, there's no El Caminos in sight. It's because we're over here at Demo HQ with our buddy Eric from Texas Bar Dominiums. Hey. Hiding in the corner. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be sealing the concrete. And so you can kind of tell, it's so dark in there you can't tell. We actually put a die in this concrete when it was poured. So there's nothing on the top. That is just concrete. And, and then we're going to... You can see how it changes right when I... Right mm -hmm. when I look at that. Beautiful. So we're just sealing it today. That is just clear sealer. Is it gonna get lighter as it dries, or is that the yeah, color? Yeah, it gets a little lighter. A little bit lighter? Sweet. I also haven't showed you, it's painted. Uh, kind of painted. Was that one coat? Holy cow, that was loud. <laughs> so Eric's rolling on first coat here. I think I'm supposed to be doing something. Yeah, it's supposed to be cross rolling. Yeah, 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 okay, I'm, I'm on it. That just means go the other way? Yeah. With the dry brush? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Don't touch the, the walls. Yeah. The trim. Got it. How am I doing? So far, so good. You know, I've actually done this before. My wife and I, we stained the concrete in our house one time. It lasted about a year and then it started peeling up. So, I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> Ooh, it's looking good. See how the color just pops? Yeah, so nice. So pretty, so pretty. Like it. And those stripes will disappear, right? Yep. That's cool. It just kind of has it, how it soaks into the concrete. Yeah. Sweet. How shiny will it be? It's going to be very shiny. Really? High gloss. Cool. Easy to clean. Oh, super easy. So Eric was asking me about when I sealed concrete. We did it at our first house. Um, and we used just a, would you call it single stage? Single? Single part. Single, single part. Single part and two part. Two so two we just bought something at the store that said it was floor sealer, but it was single part, we didn't mix it. This one, they actually mix two parts together. Um, and I guess they activate each other. Yeah. And so that was our problem. We just used a bad product. We did everything right. I mean, I looked up tons of, I mean, I don't know if it was exactly right, but I looked up a lot of stuff, did a lot of research on how to do it all. And we did it all that way, but just started peeling. It looked beautiful for about a year and started peeling looked terrible. So. Now I'm learning the correct way to do it, and it's gonna look so good, and not peel in a year, right Eric? Correct. That's what we want. And as you can see, we're also doing the front porch here. Only doing one coat on the front porch because we don't want it to get too slick. When it rains, it could be pretty slippery if you have a big, thick coat of sealer, says Eric Cortina. And the inside, though, we are doing two coats, make it nice and pretty glossy. This finish, though, also on the Concrete was made to be rougher. They raked it, right? Is that what you call it? Broom finish. Broom finish. Um, so it's got a rougher finish to prevent slipping when it's wet. We're gonna finish this coat on the outside porch, and then once that is dry in there, we'll go back in and put another coat in there. Do you let it dry all the way or just get pretty dry? Pretty dry enough to where you can walk on it without leaving marks. Without making sticky marks. Cool. Okay, as you can see, I'm standing on it now. It is still sticky, but not enough that we're messing it up by walking on it. And we're about to do the second coat. We're gonna roll it on. This one will roll on white, and then as it dries, it'll turn clear. And it'll just smooth everything out. You can kind of see some 
Still some discrepancies there, but once we get another final coat on, it'll smooth everything out. Beautiful. How long does it take this stuff to totally cure? Uh, about 24 hours. Cool. Easy as that. Inside is done, finishing up the porch here, and then we stand back and watch it dry. It's gonna be pretty awesome, guys. Done! Okay, so it's still wet right now. We just kind of kept going until we were off the porch there, and we could finish it from the outside. So this is done. You can still see a little bit of white there as it dries. That'll all turn totally clear. No Camino time! I got it all dried out. I just wanna like get all the chunks of stuff in there. Cause I can still hear like rust stuff like moving around in there, which I don't really care about, but if I can get them out easily, might as well. Check this out. Nothing. Whoops, didn't the El Camino. Nothing is moving around in there, which means this thing should be full of nasty stuff. All that was already in here, but all this, oh, it's wet. Yeah, that's gross. Oh yeah, that's all our rust that I pulled out of there. Perfect. <coughs> <sighs> hey, just spent like an hour trying to get that tank back up under the car. And I got it. It's under there. Holy cow though. Man, it did not want to go. The straps were all like stretched out, so it's really hard to get the bolts to thread back. Only two bolts hold that thing in. Super hard to get them to thread though. They're in, I mean it's in. We got a tank in the car. I need to hook up like the ground strap and then the fuel lines. Then I think we can fill it up. Yeah, I think I'm really close. All right, I'll be right back after I get those hooked up. We'll put some gas in this thing. Those two lines are hooked up. One is the fuel line, one is the return line. Got our ground on the tank hooked up. And then I was checking out some of this awesome rust and I noticed this part of the frame's pretty beat up. And tearing away a little bit, like the metal is like actually ripped up pretty bad right there. And then I started doing a little bit of detective work and I figured out what happened. Someone needed to tow this thing at one point. So they hooked a chain around that, which is not a really strong part of the frame, and then they pulled it wherever. But you can see where the bumper is also dented up. So they had some chain around that, so it was pulling here, dented that, but it also ripped this thing backwards, ripping these welds out. Probably my dad who did that. Just kidding, just kidding. I actually don't think we ever towed this thing from the back. I winched it up to the trailer from the front, didn't I? Yeah, that might have, that actually, that, that was me. I'm having to use my little siphon pump to hand pump the gas in there because the way that thing is so inset, so far back in there, makes it to where I can't pour with any of these stupid nozzles. If they just had like a nice big nozzle, I could totally pour, but I'm having to just use a pump and pump it in there by hand. Not a big deal, but I thought I would show you guys who maybe don't know what color gasoline is. I think everybody knows, but no one ever really looks at it as they're pumping in their vehicles. This is the color gasoline should be. Like a nice, clean, like yellow tinged, but nice and clear. Definitely not red. Definitely not wine colored. Yeah, I just thought you guys might, might want to know, but yeah, if you let this thing sit for 10 years, it'll turn wine colored. That's how they make wine! I think I got everything ready. So it's probably gonna take a while to like, get gas to go up there. But ideally when it does, it actually runs now. Pump that carburetor. Alright, give that starter a break. Brand new starter, don't really want to burn it out yet, but we'll give it a little break. My fear is like, the fuel pump also might be bad. And then my fear after that is like, what else? I'm like, if you know I get this thing running, like, does the power steering work? Do the brakes work? Let's see if we have any gas up there yet. Is this a nice little filter? Mm. No, it looks like nothing in there yet. I could like prime it probably and like prime the whole line, but let's just keep cranking. Hey dad. Hey guys. Dad stopped by, he told me to dump some gas down the carb, so we just did that. So I just burned up the gas in the carb. I bet we didn't actually suck any gas in there yet. We'll just probably keep doing that a few times until we get some gas to come around to this filter. Still nothing in there. Let's see if we can get her going. Ready? Yeah. Oh, it's dying. It's dying. 
It's dying. Well, that was the most promising we've had so far. So close. It's not really close. More gas? Yeah. Yeah, why not? I don't think we're gonna make it today. I think uh, possibly fuel pump. I mean, we know we, we need fuel because when he pours fuel in there, that's when it runs the best until it burns out that fuel. And then it will still run, but it just seems like it's not getting enough fuel, which either means fuel pump or carb rebuild. <laughs> That was me letting my foot off the pedal, so. Yeah. But I mean, that's pretty close. I think a carburetor rebuild, or, or like you said, that new carburetor. I just got a new car. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. That's the ticket. Obviously, we're getting fuel. Yeah. I mean, we burned up your fuel. Fuel pump kicked in. It was just when I let off and let it idle down that it will not idle. So, yeah, that carb awesome. rebuild, or let me show you what I got in this box over here. We have over here a brand new. Holly carburetor, and I got a, a bit of a special one. More on that next time. Dad, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for the help, you as bet. always. You bet. Always fun. Thanks for watching, and I love you, and I'll see you next time. Whoa. Oh. Hey, what camera is that? Number. Shut up! <laughs> Don't tell Mayor. <laughs>